Hey everybody, I am Skojo in 360. If you can't see me, but you hear me, that's because you are watching an immersive 360 video and I'm actually behind you. So use your ASD W keys or get your smartphone and turn it around or drag and scroll. And here I am. I'm here today because 360 is such an immersive way of experiencing things. It's really a great way to capture a moment that maybe the average person doesn't get to do. So what you're about to see is me running dogs, the greatest sport in the world, dog sledding, in full 360. So I'll do a little bit of voiceover every once in a while, but for the most part, I just want you to get out there and look around. You're going to be on the back of a dog sled for about the next 25 minutes. Enjoy. Now remember, if you're not seeing my dogs at this point, you've got to either move your smartphone or you can drag your screen over or use the A, S, D, and W keys to look around. Because right now, frankly, the most interesting thing to look at are my dogs. This is one of those instances where you go from feeling quite cold to very warm in a very short period of time. The dogs are in full stride. You're feeling blood pumping through every part of your body. Suddenly the shivers that you had maybe just two minutes ago, you are sweating. Now at this point I start to notice that there's a hill coming up and I can't tell whether I'm supposed to go left or right. G is a command to tell them to go right, and they go left. <laughs> but at this point, I'm really glad they did not take my order. But I'm starting to realize that we're going up a pretty steep hill, and these dogs are trying to pull my heavy weight around. So if you look down at me, I'm jumped off my sled, and I'm trying to run up the hill with the dogs. And I jump back on my sled, and they don't like it, so I have to get back off my sled, run them up the hill, and at this point I'm breathing so hard, it's hard to even keep up, so I jump back on my sled, and you can tell the dogs at this point are like, what is going on here? How much does this guy weigh? But they're giving it their best shot. Every little chance that I get, I try to get off the sled, but at this point, I'm starting to run out of breath, so it's sort of a uh, damned if you do, damned if you don't. But now the terrain is starting to open up a bit. Dogs are starting to get a stride. And this is when everything that you hear about dog mushing comes true. The adrenaline is a fun part of it, but really it's when the dogs start to hit their stride and they're just doing what they do naturally. Now I kind of regret the fact that you can hear a little rattling on the uh, camera in the case here, because at this point all I'm hearing is the swooshing of the sled. Now, if you're not looking around, you're not really getting the fullness of this video. Be sure and do look around. Use your A, S, D, and W keys or move your cell phone around or drag and drop. You can look down at me. You can look over at the dogs. Dogs are probably more interesting to look at than me at this point, but we are in Central Oregon. This is just outside of Bend, Oregon, a place called Winoga Snow Park. If I haven't already mentioned it, this was for the Bachelor Butte Dog Derby. If you want to check them out on Facebook, you can. they have a page there, uh, a fantastic organization, and uh, they're open to bringing on some new members. Everybody check them out for sure, and check out these dogs. Foreman and Citation, those are my two lead dogs. I should explain that uh, there's basically kind of a lineup. You have your lead dogs, and then you have your swing dogs in the middle, and your wheel dogs in the back. So I have two lead dogs, I have one swing dog, and two wheel dogs. Now generally, the wheel dogs are supposed to be a little bigger, a little more powerful, because they're going to be right up in front of you. The swing dogs kind of just help guide the thing. I wish I would have had six dogs in this particular case, but it was a five dog race. And then the two up front, the two lead dogs, you generally have two dogs that are both 
fairly smart. One that's maybe a little bit smarter and not quite as rambunctious, and then one that's fairly smart but is really full of energy. And then they are put together with a line between their necks. That's why they look closer uh, than the other dogs do, because they're actually uh, tied together partially. This is what dog mushing is all about here for me. The racing, well, that makes it kind of fun, but it. it's really just getting into the groove with these dogs. As you can see, every once in a while, they kind of put their heads down into the snow. That's because they're getting thirsty. So they're going down there to get the uh, snow and melt it into their mouths. Willoway, who is uh, there on the far right lower corner, <laughs> keeps trying to go down for snow. That's Layla, my only girl, which is uh, on the left there, the white dog. In the middle is Fox. He's a pretty big, powerful dog. And then my two lead dogs, Foreman and Citation. It's here that I'm starting to uh, figure something out. These dogs are really finding their groove. So I just let them open up and take over. Again, we have found that spot where they're basically in a trot, they're in a groove. It's a team sport and I'm just the coach. Again, if you're not looking around in this video, you're not getting the fullness of it all. You can look down at me trying to hang on for dear life, look at the dogs, or check out some of the high desert climate that we have out here. In the Bend, Oregon, Central Oregon area, we have uh, basically a high desert climate, and that means that it is a little colder and a little drier in the winters, but that also makes for great snow. Here's where I start to get a little bit nervous. There's a sledder, uh, musher up ahead of me, and she knew I was likely gonna pass her, so she's doing me a great courtesy by getting over to the side here, which I wouldn't know how to do with my dogs, but she gets out of my way and I'm gonna go past her, but I'm a little nervous because, you know, these dogs are a little unpredictable, so I'm watching out to make sure that there's not any little tassels or anything like that, but everything goes very smoothly. And that's the first time I've ever passed a dog team in my life. Your role as a musher really is just to be a coach. You kind of got to watch, see how the dogs are pacing themselves. If they're having any problems, give them some encouragement. They do take commands to a certain degree, but not particularly well. Uh, the only real two commands that dogs know are ha and G. And I understand those are also used for horses, but a ha is left and G is right. But not all dogs take that as orders. I'd say they're more like suggestions. The dogs really take to encouragement well. You can just, just getting your energy up, they will mimic and mirror your energy. Now, if you look uh, basically towards the dogs, you're gonna see a little white thing the trees, between the trees there. And that's not really a, a small white thing. That is Mount Bachelor. Again, just outside of Bend, Oregon. Awesome place to ski. I cross country ski through the woods here. In fact, this park where we're running is one of the uh, few places in the area where you can cross country ski and bring your dogs. Take a look at the sky too, that nice chalky blue. This area gets about 300 days of sunshine a year because we're in the, what they call the lee side of the mountains, so we're a drier climate. All the moisture gets wrung out over towards Portland and Eugene, so we end up with the sunshine and the drier climate. See how just they kind of just run in a nice little pattern. There's a good organization through most of the 
good times of mushing. It's when they start to, you know, get into their energy that a lot of times that uh, pandemonium will start to take off, which I don't even want to bring up the word pandemonium at this point, but that will give you a foreshadow into what's about to happen. For now, let's just enjoy this groove because uh, in just a few seconds here, things are going to uh, change completely. <laughs> and I'm not uh, not just saying that to be flip. <laughs> now, uh, in a race, this was, again, this was my first race, but in a race, you have some signage. See that sign there on the right? That's uh, the one arrow. That means it's pointing me in a direction, but it's just kind of giving me a heads up that that turn is coming. Then when I see two arrows, that means that the turn is imminent. So I'm about to give them an instruction. Once I see that second sign, I know I got to turn. So I'm trying to get them to go left or ha. They don't seem to be paying attention. And they go straight. See, I was supposed to go left there. <laughs> and now the dogs are wondering what the hell's wrong with me. They just want to run. They kind of wanted to go left, but now they're looking at a berm next to them. And they just want to run. Now, this is a, a kid-friendly uh, show. I don't say any F words or anything, but at this point, I'm starting to get very frustrated. I've been just now told that there is another place where I can turn left coming up in about 50 yards. The problem is it's more of a almost a reversal. So you see how it goes to the left there and the dogs try to, but we're stuck with a berm and a road that's going back the other direction. So I might kind of take a look at, at me at this point because I'm the one that's freaking out and the dogs are just wanting to run. Now, of course, I'm like pointing things, which is just absolutely a waste of time. So I all of a sudden I figure out I got to drop my hook, uh, which is the only thing that's going to hold my sled against these five dogs and it's having a hard time getting in. So I'm panicking at this point. I'm, my heart rate's probably going about 145 beats a minute. And now I'm trying to get my dogs to go over, but without the sled getting out of control. At this point, I'm just realizing I'm going to probably have to get off my sled, which leaves me very vulnerable because the dogs may just take off. And if that hook gets pulled, I'm kind of screwed. So now I've got my dogs. I'm pulling them onto the other route. And they often want to take off, but now I'm getting stuck between the berm and the ropes. This is panic time, folks. <laughs> of course, the dogs, all they want to do is run, but I'm the one who has the problem. So I am trying to figure out how I'm going to get my sled over this berm because uh, it's not exactly a well-balanced machine here. <laughs> so I am just going to take a chance and try to get this thing to jump over the berm and land correctly. Thankfully, I was a small lottery winner because I did make it clear out, but... It was a little bit of a tussle there for a second, so let's go. Thank you. Boy, <laughs> a lot of dog mushing does. That's exactly what happens is you end up with these nice, you know, long moments of peace and quiet and solitude, and then suddenly you're scrambling to try to get your dogs in line. Again, this is a team sport, and... You kind of have your point guards up front, I would say, maybe your forwards and your centers in the back. Uh, and you're just the coach. Uh, these guys are going to kind of do whatever they want to do. It's your job to sort of make it worth their while to want to do what you're asking of them. God, look how beautiful this is. This groove, the sunshine, the dogs. Look at that. They're in a little... Uh, they're just in a groove with their legs. They're not just doing the small little things. Now they're in all, basically a gallop. Are you looking around? Take a look off to the left. Take a look off to the right. Look behind the sled. It's kind of a cool perspective in this 360 video is to be able to look out behind yourself. If you look really closely, uh, at, if you can see my shadow, you can see the camera. Uh, you can see the shadow of the camera, but the, if you look down at me, you actually can't see the camera. That's the beauty of one of these 360 rigs. But the, probably the prettiest thing to look at right now is just the dogs. I mean, they are just in a zone. 
for anybody who wonders, you know, PETA protests, all that other stuff, um, have them just get on the back of a dog sled and you'll figure out pretty quickly that uh, this is what these dogs love to do. So much so that if you fall off your sled, they keep going. And that too is a foreshadow of what's about to happen because right about here, I'm starting to notice I'm seeing something. It looks like there's a dog sled team, but without a musher on it and another team up next to it. So now I'm just getting over my little tussle and I'm trying to figure out what the hell I'm going to do because my dogs don't want to slow down. I'm trying to get them to slow down. Thankfully, the sled up ahead without a musher on it kind of moves off to the side. And this woman, I believe her name was Shay. Shay, I apologize for leaving you in this position. But at this point, she is nice enough to help my dogs uh, out of the way. And it's when I, it just sinks in that this is a somebody has fallen off their sled. And that beautiful woman uh, took care of it for me because I was in such a discom discombobulated wreck that uh, I just decided to keep going. Thankfully, somebody did point out to me that uh, probably the best thing I could have done was to keep going. If we'd had three teams in that area, uh, that would have made a mess. <laughs> so I'll absolve myself a little bit. funny thing is at this point it felt like we'd been out for half hour 45 minutes the whole race is only about 25 minutes sometimes when things are going so well it actually makes time slow down for me i think it may be just because when you're in this you're in the moment you have to pay attention to what's going on you can't be thinking about your 401k um, you're basically just enjoying the view you're enjoying the dogs Look at those guys, they are just in full gallop mode. It's just beautiful when they get into that mode. They're spaced out just perfectly. Again, take a look behind the sled if you haven't already looked. You can just see me just kind of hanging on and grinning ear to ear until, well, right about now. I'm coming to a turn. And I believe I'm supposed to go right. And the guy in front of me, he didn't know I had passed somebody. So he thinks I'm part of another group and he's trying to get me to go right. Well, they're not responding to G again, which is right. So we're waiting to get them back online until we realize that, yeah, I was supposed to go left. <laughs> All right. Well, that wasn't much of a slowdown. So we're back in the group. Dogs really respond to your energy. If you're mad, they're going to be mad. If you're stressed out, they're going to be stressed out. So you can hear me encouraging them. And they respond to it. This is the longest straightaway. This is like, I don't know, Le Mans or whatever. It's the longest straightaway of the whole thing. And these dogs just get out and going. We are firing on all cylinders now. Nothing but straight, smooth sailing. And right now, off to your left is where Mount Bachelor is, but you can't see it. Off to your right is the rest of the Winoga Snow Park. I was kind of thankful. Uh, this is one of those snow parks where you're allowed to bring your dogs. And <laughs> there were signs up that, that there were dog teams in the area, but we we're always a little nervous. We might run into somebody with their cross country skis and, and a dog, and that could cause an issue. But today, it's just smooth running. Look at Layla, the, my white dog, my one girl. Look at her. She's just in a full gallop. Fox in the middle, he's the big one. He's just kind of like in between. <laughs> I think he's running really, really strong. In fact, he was so strong that he's kind of off on off onto his own. Willoway, who's on the the lower left there corner. He really responds to that, the calls and the energy. Every time I'd say something, he'd 
pounce back into a gallop again. So again, that's Willaway on the far right who just went down to get some water. Layla, my only girl, she's on the left. Fox is in the middle. He's actually a, one of the, he's the biggest dog of the team. Foreman and Citation as my lead dogs. Right now, this is like, <clears throat> no, I don't know, third quarter, <laughs> late in the third quarter of a basketball game, and your five players are starting to get a little tired. So while we're on a straightaway, they're kind of like, eh, come on, coach. <laughs> but they're still managing to sink a few three-pointers. Oh, and then another sign coming up. Now I gotta try to get him to go left, and oh my goodness, it worked! Small victories. Well, we had a good victory, but the game ain't over yet. Yeah, what we just went on to is a moderate, long hill. <laughs> Dogs are tired, and so is the human. I'm encouraging him so that I don't have to get off the sled because, frankly, I'm exhausted at this point. But I have to jump off, and every time I jump off, they start to run a little faster and things start to go a little better. So then I just decide to jump back on my sled, and they don't really take too kindly to that when I do that. <laughs> it bogs them down, they're like, my God. This guy's got to stop eating so much pizza. Naively, I kind of think that maybe just encouraging them more will get them to, to pull my fat butt up the mountain. <laughs> but no, about the only thing that works is getting off the sled and actually running with them. It takes oh, about 250 pounds off the sled. So I get back to it. I'm gassed at this point. The dogs are gassed at this point. We're doing everything we can just to keep getting up this hill. I can tell you now that it's been a couple days since this race that <laughs> everything in my lungs that was uh, buried in there has been being coughed up <laughs> after this hill. So uh, it was a, a good aerobic workout. I think everybody should uh, do this to help lose weight. At this point, we are hitting the wall, almost like you would in a marathon, where I am exhausted running uphill, the dogs are exhausted, so if I jump back on my sled, it just kind of <laughs> annoys them more than anything. But we're starting to make some progress. I know from having cross-country skied on this hill before that we are getting near the top, so I'm starting to feel a little encouragement kicking in. But the dogs, <laughs> take a look at them. They're still just sort of like, um, can we get done with this hill already? Now, some people think you use the word mush to get the dogs to go on, but I haven't actually ever heard anyone use the word mush. A lot of them say hike or come on or something like that. I use hike as a way of saying, off we go. Yeah, we're starting to feel the crest of the hill coming up now. My fat butt ain't dragging him as hard with, uh, without gravity being against us. So now we're starting to sense that we may be into the final run. Now, now the dogs are really starting to fire. They're exhausted, but they also think they have just kind of an instinctual no knowledge that they're getting close to the end. I 
And I gotta admit, I think there's something to the dogs just like to get running as fast as they can, which see me here hearing hop. I'm hoping they're gonna turn left at this point. And they do! <laughs> Thank goodness. Now we're on a full-blown sprint going down this hill. This is the steepest hill of the whole thing. And you can see these signs pointing to me that we're gonna be turning. But we're running strong, we're running super fast. I know we're coming near the finish line, but my dogs kind of seem to want to drift left. So I'm saying, gee, go to the right. It ain't working. <laughs> oh, we're so close. I don't know what happened here, but one of the dogs got the clue and made a jump and off we went. But still, Foreman and Citation are like, Wanting to drift to the left. But they're running fast. Finish line is in sight. And four minutes citation are once again drifting to the left. Desperately trying to get him to turn to the right. But now they're seeing people, and I guess they just kind of want to hang out and get out of their way. So, I don't know, Dad. Aren't we done racing? No, we're not. <laughs> There we go. And we're still going left. <laughs> These dogs just kind of decided they were going to go a certain direction, but thank God for trail volunteers because they helped me get right and get the dogs to finally get their butts over <laughs> the right and get them around that little post. These dogs are not that big, but when you have to try to pull them to make them do anything, uh, they are very strong. Whew. All right, we're across the finish line. Thank you to the Bachelor Butte Dog Derby. I am Skojo in 360. I hope you enjoyed this experience. Please subscribe to my channel. Love y'all. Peace out.